Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode one of the Road Less Traveled podcast. I am here with my co-host, Alex Cavanaugh, who is a, gosh, you are so many things, so many things to me and other people, but Your um, husband. I'm going to start with husband, baby daddy, barista, drone pilot, Emmy award winner, uh, photographer, videographer, and the list goes on and on, but I think that's good for now. Yeah, thanks, Les. Um, I'm very excited to start this with you. I believe I bought all this equipment in 2019 when we were living in Los Angeles, ready to do a podcast, and I think we did 18 countries that year. Yeah, uh, and that was just, was that 2018 or 2019? 2019. 2019, God, yeah, chock full, which is maybe why we never started said podcast, but they look familiar. This is the same table we were using when we shared an office in 2019. It takes me back. I'm really excited. So let's talk about what everyone's going to be listening and tuning into and what this podcast is all about. Oh, gosh. Well, what our lives are all about. Travel, family, relationships, travel. <laughs> I mean, I will definitely bring in uh, some photography, cinematography, drone tips, traveling, lots of marketing tips. I come from obviously a drone background. Social media marketing uh, is one of my specialties. So I will touch on all of that as well as dad life, traveling with kids. We're going to we're gonna cover a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of what you see already from us, but more in depth. Um, just more. I think what I'm really excited about this podcast is because we are on the road less traveled a lot. We're going to take the show on the road. There's no way we can do this in one set position at a time. We have to take the show on the road. So, But that's the beauty of a podcast is that it you, you can easily do it anywhere around the world. Yeah. And I've been watching some podcasts lately and seeing people's environments change and the people they're interviewing and it it really brings a new dynamic to it. So I'm really excited for some special guests that we're going to have on down the track. Uh, Leslie's got a lot of friends in the industry that we're going to be reaching out to. And uh, as the show grows, I hope we can pull in some big names for you guys. Mm -hmm. Let's do a bit of an intro about ourselves. Uh, for people that might not know much about your background, let's just... Give me, give me a five, 10 minute introduction about you and where you came from and how you, how you started the road less traveled. Mm, takes me back to, <laughs> I don't know, 2012. I think it all kind of, well, God, it starts way back before that. Um, my best friend was an only child. Shout out Alex B. Throckmorton. And so I was her stand in sister and her parents loved to travel and I was handed the best card in life to be her best friend. Um, and so we went all over the world together, uh, just the four of us and alongside my family too. My family loved to travel. Uh, and so kind of with that, with both families, I would go and I think my first trip with them was Hawaii. And then it went all over Europe, China. And so I credit them a lot with my love of travel alongside my own family. And uh, cut to... 2012 when <laughs> I went on The Bachelor and we of course there's a travel element there which I loved um, but I got kicked off in St. Croix I'll never forget it never have to go back to St. Croix and uh, I met somebody and he kind of took me to Argentina and there was the jumping off point of travel of starting the road less traveled because we were extensively traveling throughout South America. And I was like, I have got to showcase this somehow. And I wanted, I, I had a little bit of a following from The Bachelor. Now, keep in mind, this was 2012. And Instagram kind of was in its infancy still. Mm -hmm. And so it, it wasn't a huge number. Uh, and I, I had always wanted to do something with it. So travel was the best thing that came to mind. It was the, ob it was the most obvious thing. And so... I'd had a job in Argentina for about a year and it was, um, it was nice. It actually allowed me to dive deeper into what I would do with the road less traveled. So it was in marketing, it was in social media, it was keeping up with the company's blog. And after a year of that, I quit and started my own blog. And I remember calling my best friend, Alex, the one who, you know, instilled that love of travel in me from a very young age. And I was like, 
you know what? I'm starting a blog. I'm just going to do it. I have no idea what to call it. And without skipping a beat, she goes, well, it's got to be the road less traveled. And I was like, God, maybe you should start a blog. Like you, you are so wildly creative. That's perfect. And gosh, I could go on so many tangents here. There's so much to talk about from the cool story that got me, even that domain name, the roadlesstraveled.com, mm-hmm. um, to, you know, how, how I started, you know, logging hours on a couch in my small Argentine apartment, you know, uh, crafting this pitch and changing that pitch based on what, you know, the person on the other end of the email would say. Um, but my very first partnership was to my first love of Patagonia and then the Atacama desert. Again, this could be, so, this could be so long winded and I don't even know where to start and stop and what to include. Cause there's just so much here. Um, and we'll dive into everything, but I mean, there's something beautiful about that. You were, you were approaching hotels before it was even a thing and their inboxes were full with people going, Hey, can I come and stay? in exchange for this like yeah. that's 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 a, that was 11 12 years ago now that's amazing at least yeah and uh and i think the fact that i lived in argentina and south america i think it did me some favors because i'd quit my job um the cost of living in argentina was so so low i mean mm-hmm. so low and um my blog didn't make money until you know at least a year in and also it wasn't a very saturated market. So I would, I would email these people and they'd be like, you want to do what? Yeah. <laughs> we don't get it. And so I'd have to kind of lay it out there. And so most of them were very, um, very into just trying, trying it out and seeing how this partnership would work. Um, and then the money started coming in and then I would start getting all these opportunities to fly around the world on these press trips, but they could only fly me out of North mm-hmm. America and so became the contentious, uh, the contentious part of our relationship of, of are we going to stay here in Argentina? Or are we going to move back mm-hmm. to the States? And um, became the demise of our relationship. And, and that's such a big part of where I am now. You know, yeah. every, every small road leads to. Yeah, I will say on that, I've had the privilege of going through all your old hard drives and <laughs> I got to give you credit. You you are a phenomenal photographer, um, minus the ex-boyfriends in there. You've <laughs> taken some spectacular images, especially in Patagonia. Um, yeah, for every uh, photo or mostly limitless video that y'all have seen in the past, Alex has had to dive through that content yeah. with many ex-boyfriends involved in that content and uh, you're a trooper. Thanks, babe. Just before we go on to my introduction, give people, where did you go to college? Like, where did you go to university? What helped your writing Mm. on the Road Less Travel blog post? Yeah, that's a a big part of it, too. I graduated from the University of Georgia, go dogs, and graduated graduated with a dual degree in broadcast news and psychology. I loved both of them so much. Um, in In my next life, I will be some sort of... I think therapist. I think it's just so interesting to dive into from, yeah. Uh, And so I think that both of those ultimately helped um, with this career path, Um, journalism, writing, communications, and then psychology too. I feel like you can apply to anything in life. Yeah. Um, And so I think those two things, yeah, have helped me a lot down the road. Yeah. Yeah. All right, enough about me. Tell me more <clears throat> about you. You came from Australia all the way over here. There's a lot to dive into. There's a lot. I'll try and keep it as brief as possible. But yes, I, I'm from Sydney, uh, Manly, specifically the northern beaches of Sydney. It's an absolute beautiful place in the world. A lot of people ask me how I ended up in Little Rock, Arkansas. But I am here because of my lovely wife over here, as we all know. Um, and it's been a beautiful story so i finished high school and i followed in my father's footsteps and i got my certificate three in carpentry and then a certificate four in construction so i became a licensed builder and i was building houses and i just got really excited about photography and then marketing these houses we built we'd build these beautiful homes on the beaches architectural homes 
and then we just leave. There was no website, there was no social media. So I bought my first Canon camera and that brought in my love for photography. I was taking photos of these houses that we built that I, that I was so proud of building. And then I wanted to take aerial photos. And then I traveled to the US for my first trip and I met a guy in New York on a rooftop and he was showing me his showreel. I'm like, what's a showreel? And he got all these epic shots with drones and he was one of the first drone pilots in Europe. And I'll never forget this shot that just captivated me at that moment. And he was flying over this French vineyard, over these large cast iron gates, did this swooping shot over the gates, then over the house to reveal the vineyard. I'm like, how the hell did you get that shot? And he's like a drone. And I'm like, what is that? Like, you know, I thought drones were Iraq, all that bad stuff. Then, then I was in this deep hole of flying drones, building them, and it was just this passion which ultimately led me to Los Angeles. Um, I, I moved there for a girl, and that's when I got into my first productions uh, with Netflix and various productions all over the US. So uh, that's kind of my backstory from carpentry to drone pilot. Yes, the infamous drone, which led to how we met if it weren't for drones we would not be here right now you would not be in little rock i think you've got to tell this story (laughs) oh my gosh well i think it should be from both of our perspectives for sure but it's pretty cool to think back and know that every single piece to this story had to happen had to take place for us to meet okay so the story goes all the way back to 2013 yes that was over a decade ago and i had just moved to argentina but before I did that, I my boyfriend at the time really wanted me to bring a drone down. And I was like, a drone? We don't need a drone. What are we what are we gonna do with a drone? We have no business flying a drone. <laughs> but I did it anyway. And they were really expensive at the time. This was like the old school Phantom mm-hmm. Fours, threes, mm-hmm. I don't even know. And so so began my drone journey, which led me to you. But we take it to Argentina, you know, use it a few times. It's still intact. He and I break up. And the year is 2015. Uh, I meet a guy named Adam Goldberg in 2016 at a press trip in Maui. So we go down to the Ritz-Carlton Kapalua for a press trip. He's there as another participant. He's the drone pilot. I'd never met another drone pilot before. I thought it was really cool because I had a little background with drones, not much. Um, And so he and I keep in touch and I go on to date somebody else. He flies this, my old drone into an Aruban palm tree, breaks the drone. Said drone sits in my closet for a couple of years because it's broken, never to be fixed. (sighs) We break up. Then I meet somebody off of Bachelor Winter Games, he who shall not be named. And uh, he has a drone. So again, my broken drone continues to sit in the closet. He and I break up, world's shortest relationship. And I remember this, I had this drone in the closet. I had this BMW shoot in a couple days. And I was like, you know what? Some cool shots should be taken with my drone. It would it would really elevate this partnership. Let me see if I can fix this thing that's collected dust for the last couple of years. I troubleshoot it. The propellers start right up, but no thrust. Like I couldn't get this thing off the ground. We all need a bit of thrust <laughs> in our lives. <laughs> and for the life of me, can't get it, can't get it in the air. So I call up Adam, the drone pilot I had met in Maui. And Uh, He said, you know what? I'm in Atlanta. I can't help you. But if you're in LA, you should message this guy named Alex Cavanaugh. He knows everything there is to know about drones. And so I was like, okay. Maybe. (laughs) I quickly searched him, uh, his handle in Instagram, slid into his DMs. And that was it. I think you got right back to me and said, hey, I can come. I can come check it out tomorrow at your apartment. And I was like... No, like, I don't know you. Like, I- you also lived above a nursing home. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That's for another story. Anyway, um, 
<laughs> Maybe that's why I didn't want you to come. <laughs> I didn't want that's you to exactly come That's exactly why you didn't want me to come because you had to go through the back door and you're seeing patients left and right and it's like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it anyway. wasn't it wasn't to code. So you came to my place. <laughs> I yes. So I but if you know anything about LA, you know it's huge. And if somebody lives on the other side of town, you just don't see each other. Like you the just valley. don't. It's just it, yeah, yeah, you just don't see hard. each other. So, what was really miraculous about this whole story is that Alex lived approximately, approximately like I think 6 minutes away from me. Yeah. Maybe less. Yeah. That was huge cuz had you lived in like <laughs> I don't even know where the valley <laughs> i would not have come probably not probably not so i'm getting my hair done the next day and afterwards i i had planned on heading to alex's house for him to check out this broken drone uh starting at the kind of like the end of that hair appointment i started getting really nauseous i don't know why just it 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 stands out in my memory and I'm like, oh, I don't feel good. Like, I don't think I can make it to his house. But I knew I wanted this drone for this BMW shoot. So I swallow my pride and my saliva. Because you know when you're like about to vomit, yeah. you start salivating. And it's, it, mm -hmm. gets, it was getting really bad. But I make my way over to Marina Del Rey. And I'll never forget. I walk into your gate and your door is open. You know, because there's that mat, like that beautiful California breeze, doors open, and I see you before I walk through the threshold, and I'm like, shit, this guy is hot. I should have done more research. <laughs> I'm also about to vomit, so I, like, it. I'm a, I am a hurricane walking it could into be this a projectile house. Projectile vomit through the, uh, the entryway. <laughs> I mean that. Yeah, <laughs> you would never have forgotten me. Not that you did. Anyway, but so I, I pass through the threshold, and immediately, y'all. The smell of pesto hits me in the face. See, he knew I was coming. So he was like, ooh, let me like I make love pesto. some, let me like whip up some homemade stuff to make me look good. And uh, <laughs> it, let me just say the smell of pesto did not pair well with my massive. Um, no. What am I trying to say? Um, Your nausea. My nausea. <laughs> So it gets even worse. And like, I don't really remember our first encounter because I am trying my damnedest not to vomit on your hardwood floors. Funny thing is I had a, uh, a friend from uh, Uruguay staying with me and he was there in the sort of the background taking video and BTS. I can put some of these up for the YouTube channel, but uh, that that's, was quite that's interesting. That's not creepy. That's yeah. not creepy at all. <laughs> He's like, I get BTS because, you know, Leslie's like, got this huge Instagram following and I'm like that was very intimidating too having this woman reach out to me with the you know the blue check and she just got off some TV show that I have no idea about I'm like you know and she's beautiful and I'm like this this woman is way out of my league and then it was just it was just funny like I'm like I didn't ask him to do BTS and all this stuff but I just genuinely wanted to fix your drone Mm -hmm. And help you out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which is why you're making pesto and having a Uruguayan take BTS photos in the background. I, gen I just wanted to have a home <laughs> homemade <laughs> meal that night. You just so happened to be coming over that day. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So about five minutes pass. And oh, I'm like, am I going to have to think, am I going to have to like fake, like I left something in the car and vomit in the street? Should I ask where the bathroom is? Mind over matter. I get through it. And we start drone talking and... Turns out you couldn't fix my drone. So yeah. you very graciously lent me one of yours. Which we did a test fly of and it worked. I had it in the front yard. We took it off. I showed you it was, I think it was the one newer model than the model you had. And it worked. I, I ran Leslie through it, did the controls, kind of like the uh, ghost with the uh, clay, but with the remote controls leaning over. No. We didn't do that. No, that never happened. Um, I just think you wanted to make sure I knew how to actually fly a drone, which I barely did. I know. It was also a little secret ploy to give her the drone so that Leslie would come back and I'd get to see her again. Yeah, he knew what he was doing. The pesto, giving me the drone. Anyway, cut to the BMW shoot, y'all. The drone doesn't work. <laughs> But okay. we did the test fly, so it did work before. You had said it had been having problems. So you gave me a faulty drone. Anyway, I brought it back. I returned it. I don't know how we got on the subject of him getting me a brand new drone, but you had had like 
sponsor credits to use. And we somehow got on the topic of you getting me a brand new Mavic Air, which Mm is awesome. And of course, I said, hell yes to that. Thank Mm -hmm. you. And our first date was going to fly this Mavic Air in Venice. Mm -hmm. And then... I didn't know it was a first date either. Again, I was like, obviously, I thought Leslie was like extremely attractive. And I'm like is this a date or am I just like helping her out trying to be too nice? Like you asked to go get fish tacos afterwards. It was, a was date. afterwards again. I was like, that was when I knew I was like, okay, she likes me. She said yes to the fish tacos, <laughs> which was at James beach, Venice, no longer. RIP, RIP. Oh, but we were in after that, a little drone lesson there on Venice beach, which was very nice. We're at James beach. We're talking and I just couldn't stop talking to you for like an hour and a half back and forth. It was just, effortless and i just gotten out of a very serious long-term five-year relationship very kind of standoffish you know uh, uh, getting hurt again but it was just so effortless with you yeah it was beautiful it was one of those meals where the waitress or waiter comes over like 10 times and he's like are you ready you ready to order no still no okay i'll be back (laughs) yeah and then during that date we got onto talking about norway and you, how you had a trip coming up and how I'd never been to Norway. And I was like, oh, that sounds amazing. And I somehow invited myself. That's that's true. Well, I don't know. I wish we could go back to that moment because I think I was like, we should come. Completely joking, never thinking you'd say yes. And you were like, great. Yeah, I'd love to. Let, yeah, me, and let me look at flights. I don't know. I, I think I was like, we talked about it then. But then after that, we had a few more dates and then it was getting... Yeah, I do believe Norway was technically our ninth date. Yeah, which let's start to talk about Norway and that first trip. Like, how did you feel meeting someone that you'd only known for two months? Yeah, I mean, I remember telling my parents about it and they were like, all right, is is he going to kill you in Norway? Like, what? who is this guy? Do you even know him? Are you sure you want to do this? I was so excited to just leave the country and obviously meeting you. I had like, you know, the adrenaline's rushing. I remember flying in first. I was in Bergen Airport uh, waiting for Leslie to come out. I got there a day or two earlier and I was so nervous waiting for you to come out. I was like, is she going to come? Like, is she going to stand me up? Like, that would be kind of weird. <laughs> But you came out and we, we ended up having the best trip. To this day, I think it's been my favorite trip. It's hard to beat that, you know, feeling where it's just kind of spontaneous and euphoric. And, you know, it's full of more questions than answers. And it's really when you start to get to know somebody, you know, nothing allows you to really get that deep level of knowing until you travel with somebody. And I mean, even the playlist in the car, like I had a playlist at that time. And when I hear those songs again, it takes me right back to cruising like the Lofoten Islands with you and pulling over. Like it would usually take two or three hours to get somewhere really epic. It would take us four or five because we're stopping every way, pulling out drones, cameras. We both had our Sonys. (sighs) Um, And so there was just so there was a lot of synergy there uh, to begin with. And we just we both loved it exploration i mean i think not only you know just the destination but the two of us and really getting to know each other and that trip just solidified everything for me yeah i think leslie was really happy that i was not part of that bachelor world because i didn't know anything about the show i wasn't bachelor nation i didn't know anything and to leave that all behind like obviously i i heard some stories from you but I think you were a little bit traumatized from that maybe previous relationship. And as was I, but like exploring our relationship, it was part of healing and moving on. And it was just, it was beautiful. Like hiking up to that mountain, that the fjord, was it Senja? And Senja? Yeah, I think it was Senja Segla hike. Yeah. It was awesome. It's one. It was one of those, honestly, I don't know. It was one of those hikes that just kept going and going and going. And I think it was only like 200, 2,000 feet of elevation gain. Yeah. And it was just over a two mile hike, but it was straight up. It was straight up. It was, and it was a beautiful day. And the views up there highly recommend this hike. It's on Leslie's blog um, with everything else we did on that trip. Uh, it was just epic views. I remember that top down drone shot photo I took and then I did the flyaway of us and like you're a daredevil like you're you were sitting right on the edge of this like the very top where the flag is and your feet of course you're getting like your feet photo for the blog and you're like come sit down and I'm like 
I'm fine with heights, but you're just like, you were fearless up mm. there. And then, of course, I wanted to fly the drone. So I'm like trying to watch the drone while sitting on this edge and get this shot of us. It was, uh, it was, a, it was a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> it was a vibe for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be careful um, on those edges. But yeah, I knew what I was doing. But all the photos from that, I, I was going back through the hard drives and just you're glowing. You're absolutely radiating on that trip. Like, from when we were hot up the top of that hike, you know, to down below with these like moody mountains and you've got these throws over you and the high grass with the red boat sheds and just the landscapes there and you was just like... I was oh. also five and a half years younger, pre-kids, babe. <laughs> well, I still think you look as beautiful as ever, but I have fun memories of that trip. For anybody who's thinking about visiting Norway, just do it. It is one of those, I just, there's something about Scandinavia, y'all. And there is a reason it comes in at the number one spot every year uh, for happiest countries on earth. It's either like Norway or Sweden or Finland. Like one of, they're all competing for like the number one, like happiest country on the planet. And I get it because it's powered by nature. It's so beautiful. (sighs) It's just like the biggest exhale on the planet. I think whether you want to see the Northern lights in the winter or the midnight sun in the summer, mm, mm, I just want to go back. It's just like, take me back. I think what I liked about Norway, there weren't a lot of lodging options. You kind of got what you got. Small boutique hotels. We stayed in that fisherman's village. Yeah. Um, We, Broke some beds uh, in one destination. I think we got to elaborate <laughs> on this a little bit. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> I mean, I think people want to hear hear it. I mean, we we were on staying at an Airbnb. I think it was before we we hiked, did the hike in San Josegla. Uh-huh. And look, I'm gonna I'm gonna announce something here. If you're gonna get and start a holiday rental, invest in the bed. Okay, don't do not get an IKEA bed because the thunder from down under will break it. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I'm, it's just I'm, like, am I red? Sorry, mom. Am I red? <laughs> Cut. Sorry, mom. It's just young lovers. We just did what we did, you mm, know. The throes of young love. Um, I, I told I you actually, they'd be thrusting. Wait, I've got to log on. <laughs> Uh, to this app and see if I mean it's got it. This message has to still be there. Oh my god! Here, Here we is. go. Read read the message. <laughs> is the message still there? Mine is. She deleted it. I guess she did because mine says. I'm not sure how that happened. I remember sleeping that night in your house and hearing strange noises from the frame whenever I would move or turn over. It was slightly annoying, but I was able to just go back to sleep each time. I'm sorry if that happened during our stay, but perhaps it's the wear and tear from various uses. Let me know. You're a terrible liar. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway. I digress. Yeah, we broke beds, so... Invest in the bed. If you have a vacation rental, do not go cheap and get good pillows. You're a pillow snob. I'm a pillow snob. And also I noticed in Norway, they don't have an undersheet. They just have a comforter. Yeah, that's like the the Euro style of bedding. I'm not a fan. Hmm. I'm not. Let us know. What do you guys think? I like a, I like a, you know, a fitted sheet, a top sheet. Yeah. And then the duvet. Yeah. There was a lot of like single bed action. And then they had some weird topping mattress and not not ideal. But hey, the landscape's made up for the bedding situation. <laughs> and Leslie, of course. Moving on from breaking beds. I feel like this is going to be a beautiful venture with you. We've wanted to launch a podcast for years. I actually d- recorded 10 episodes back in 2018 and almost, almost launched my own podcast. And just didn't I just I don't think at the end of the day I had the time or the commitment for it and I knew that yeah I wanted to be fully committed here we are five years later yeah I think the hardest part of anything uh being a new year is starting something and I am a dreamer Leslie like tells me all the time you're such a dreamer and I am I get a little bit sidetracked I want to do this I want to do that I wrote a documentary film which I'd love to shoot but I've put it all on the back burner and I think this podcast is going to be really great. I'm excited for it. 
where parents now, I said to, I looked at Leslie last night. I said, we've got a family now. And I think that's really cool. And we've got some great travel stories from solo travel, family travel now. And I think we can both bring a lot of uh, advice and life experience to this and excitement, taking it on the show on the road. And you guys are going to be on this roller coaster with us. Mm -hmm. Happy 2024. And in processing 2023 for me, I have, I realized I've come so far, you know, personally and professionally, there were, there was a lot in the past couple of years that I, I've noticed a lot of growth in, and I'm so proud of, um, limitless retreats being one of those things. Um, the road, less travel blog partnerships campaigns that I'm so proud of. And I want to continue with that trajectory and I've always wanted to do a podcast. And so mm. here we are and it's, there's no time like the present. There's yeah. no time like the present. So let this just be, if, if, Something has been weighing on your heart. If you've been wanting to try something, to do something, to start something, just do it. You never know what could mm-hmm. come from it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's a, it's an exciting time. This year is huge. Uh, you've accomplished some amazing things with Limitless. How many retreats have you run now? I think 15. 15 and just we're, we're going to Galapagos this year. We're going to New Zealand in three weeks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're going to New Zealand. Um, we're running... Not one, but two retreats in New Zealand going to Australia in between to celebrate Nora's birthday. Uh, there's just, yeah, there's a lot of good things happening this and year. And have your family meet Lily for the first time. Speaking of Lily, what's happening in episode two? Oh, yeah. The birth story. I am so excited. So I actually started writing this on the blog. Um, but uh, y'all, November, December were nuts. And I just never finished it. I never completed it. Um, and I thought, why not just share it on the podcast instead? Um, so much that has never been told that I've, you know, never shared publicly about this birth, how it even started. And I'm excited to do that next episode. Very different to Nora's. Very different to Nora's. Yes. There were some dicey moments there towards the end. Um, so, you know, here we are. She's, yeah, she's here and I'm excited to share it from start to finish. Okay. I think we covered a lot from, gosh, this podcast, how we met Norway and tune in next week for the birth story of Lily James. I am so excited to dive into that more and share everything. Um, thank y'all so much for listening. Definitely be sure to subscribe to the new podcast, The Road Less Traveled and be well and safe travels. See you on the next episode.